Nick Perler here with Perler Wrestling. I've got six strategies that can help you tremendously to develop, um, you know, your your team and well, number one, to become a better coach, but number two, to build an infrastructure of a team of coaches where you, know, you kind of just develop a success machine. You want to run your program. You don't want your program to run you. And you want your, your program should be kind of like a business, right? So, you know, uh, a true business, you should be able to, you know, go to Hawaii for two weeks. And when you come back, uh, there's more money in the bank account than when you left and you didn't do all the work. You know, the accounting's been done, the bidding, the jobs, the services, whatever business you're in, um, you, because you have a team and you have built something that can run without you. Maybe not run without you forever, but it can run without you for a periods of time. And, um, you know, a, a coach should be sort of on the similar path. Um, we've got 21 practices a week. I won, run one of those. We did have 24, but now we're down to 21 practices a week. So I've been doing this for years and a um, quarter of a century, actually 25 years coaching full time. I guess I haven't had a real job in uh, 25 years. Uh, just been coaching, you know, and it's worked out very well for us. So uh, I'm definitely someone who can offer you some great insight. Number one, you want to have a feeder system. Your youth feeder system, that includes middle school, is more important than your high school team because you cannot have high level success in a good wrestling state when you're just recruiting kids who got cut from the football team out of the hallways. You can't do that. You want to have, sure, beginners, sure, the, the, the kids you recruit out of the hallways. Um, some coaches say, well, I, I wanted to have a job on campus so I could recruit from the hallways. Yes, but you're still taking first year kids. They're not even gonna figure wrestling out until their junior year. Most of them aren't gonna wrestle in the off season. So you kind of have three and a half months worth of time with them. And you say, yeah, but we get to wrestle or practice six days a week. No, you don't. At the beginning of the year you do, but pretty soon you have a dual meet on Tuesday, uh, a tournament Friday night, tournament all day Saturday, no wrestling Sunday. You get three practices a week. So it's just tough to do. You wanna have um, three to six kids coming in every year, maybe many more, waves of youth wrestlers, many of which who have wrestled two, three, four, five, six, seven years, some of them that wrestle year round. And now you have kids you can just plug into the lineup that can compete for state medals right out of the get go. You know, Kale Sanderson's not doing what he's doing uh, by recruiting out of the Penn State hallways. He depends on the top high school athletes from around America, and that's where they're recruiting. So the colleges are doing this, and you should try to think about this as well. Now, you can't recruit, but you can build a system, uh, an infrastructure that feeds you. So have, have a feeder system. Uh, secondly, you wanna have systems in place. So you wanna have a high school drill system and a youth drill system that includes some beginners, um, tactics but you want to race through the beginner stuff so we want to have an onboarding process so we have a youth program as a, a set of drill plans right we just have a one-page drill plan is all we use we call it perla wrestling academy core skills it's a one-page drill plan because 95 percent of your points come from five percent of the wrestling you know then we have pwa elite we also have world-class wrestler program that's beyond what we would do at a high school so you know, our elite program would be what we would use for high school. And um, so if you have kind of a quick onboarding process, maybe your youth team, you pull those brand new beginners, your high school team, you pull those brand new beginners aside, have a separate practice on half the gym for them for the first two weeks, boom, move them into the practice. So but when it boils down to it, you're going to have a practice plan for your, your youth kids and you have a practice plan for your high school kids. And, you know, uh, it's just like an assembly line, all right? It's like building a deck. You have a blueprint. So you definitely want to have a system in place for youth and a system in place for your high school. And that includes a quick two-week um, kind of onboarding process of the new wrestlers. Okay, so number two, you want to have a team of coaches. You cannot do it all on your own. So you want to have maybe one youth coach who's in charge and there might be one or two youth coaches under him or her 
that are um, also helping. You really don't want 13 dads on the wrestling mats who've never wrestled before. They're just not gonna do very much. You just wanna have a couple of youth coaches, everyone else can sit and watch. And you have one guy that's in charge, and the other guys listen to him, and the guy in charge is listening to you. And they teach the way you teach, they run practice the way you run practice. One guy wants to run 45 minutes of practice, one guy wants to do 30 minutes of games, one guy wants to do stretching for 30 minutes before practice. And you know, we wanna get in there, stretch for two minutes, go. We don't do anything else. So you wanna you wanna kind of you, you can't be fighting with your with your feeder system coaches by the same token, your your freshman and women's coach and your JV coach and your assistant coaches, they should all be on the same page. And you wanna train them, they're not gonna do everything exactly like you, but as long as it's eighty percent, fine. You cannot do it all. So you want a team of coaches. So that's number three. Number four, um, you want to focus on getting better at wrestling. Don't get so sidetracked with um, statistics. I mean, let the let somebody else keep track of the stats. Y you shouldn't care how many reversals everybody on the whole team gets. You have 80 kids on your high school boys, girls, JV, and freshman team, and you're trying to track how many reversals every single one of them got. I mean, who cares, right? Keep track of wins and losses, maybe most takedowns. Uh, you know, unless you just really love it and you're into it, but don't get too distracted. The bottom line is, you know, this kid can't can't head block and down block and can't get to his feet and, and you know, she can't ride anybody and, and, and she can't finish her leg attacks and this one's afraid of losing. This one hasn't made weight in three weeks and, and you're worried about statistics. We got to win. Let's focus on wrestling. So that, that that's, that's, that's very important in my book. Um, number five, off-season program is going to be pretty basic, right? Because most of your kids do not wrestle year-round. If you can get them on the mat once a week year-round, maybe twice a week in the off-season after school, so have some kind of an off-season program for them. And you know, like we have coaches all over the place that plug their kids into our academy, but most of their t kids aren't interested because they're not really hardcore wrestlers. Maybe they're hardcore athletes, but they're focused mostly on softball, mostly on track, mostly on baseball, mostly on football. Um, so you want something for those kids to do. And that includes off-season weightlifting program. And you want to incentivize this. So a good thing to do would be to say, okay, you, you four or six guys or girls are on a team. Every tournament you go to, you get this many points. Every uh, off-season practice, maybe at Perler Wrestling, you get this many points. Every, every weight room you show up for after school, you get this many points. And then you can have these teams competing against each other. And uh, whichever team has the most points... Um, you know, they're the team captains. A friend of mine uh, shared that idea with me 20 years ago. I thought it was genius. So um, off-season program, have something in place. Uh, number six, in-season. You want to have a weightlifting program in-season. Sure, you can't lift weights for an hour and a half, but maybe there's just like um, you're supersetting, you know. Uh, one chest, one shoulder, one back, one leg exercise. Get out, you know. Um, three sets of six to eight. It's, you're just trying to maintain strength. But I think a lot of people ignore the weight room because you're like, we don't have time. Well, you know what? You probably do have time if you had a very limited um, weightlifting program. So don't ignore the weight room during the season. And um, just think about, hey, can I get this, you know, maybe it's bench for these, these two weeks. And then maybe next week it's incline bench. And then maybe the week after that, we're back to bench. You know, maybe we're doing uh, weighted pull-ups and then maybe the next two weeks we're doing pull-downs. And so you maybe have two or three back exercises you rotate through. And, you know, over Christmas break, you might be able to get more weight room time. But I definitely think we ignore the weight room and I think that's a big mistake. Um, in addition to that, number six, I would say, because um, I have my notes here, it says weights and no weight cutting. Weight cutting, if you're, don't try to have your, your, your best team on the mat November 1st. If your kids are all cutting down to their their lowest weight, by the time season comes, they hate wrestling. They're gonna be shrunk up. You know, your 135 pounder is gonna look like a 130 pounder because you had him down to 135 all year. Let him or her wrestle 140. And then right before districts, they go down to 135. Now they look like a 140 pounder wrestling at 135. So, um, the weight lifting, I think, is important off-season and in-season, and I think we um, the weight cutting 
is um, who cares if you lose two or three or four dual meets? But if you're in a position to, to get top five or eight at the state tournament and win some state trophies uh, most many years, that's what you're focused on. Number seven would be um, think long term, right? So uh, years ago, Ohio State, I was chatting with one of their assistants and, and he was like, three years we're going to be in a position to win the NCAA, NCAA title. And they did. Um, he was like, we're red shirting. I, th I actually think it was Hunter Stevers, uh, Logan Stevers' brother Hunter. You know, this guy's going to get this way. But we're, we got these new freshmen coming in and we, we pulled this kid's red shirt. And I mean, he had like five or six little like chess pieces and you know this guy's got to be a 197 pounder by the NCAA tournament three years from now but this year he's 84 they had it all worked out and you know so they basically said the next three years we're not going to win an NCAA title but three years from now we will and they did so I think sometimes we we, we do want to win now but sometimes it's just not going to happen and you got to say hey my goal is we're, we're preparing in the future and you need to think ahead a little bit so you know you don't just wait until November 1st when your first practices start and say oh who's my 113 pounder who's my uh, you know wh which girls are gonna fill these spots you you need to have this figured out ahead of time so how do you do that you pay attention to the youth practices and you start to think it you start looking ahead and then you check and they're like hey you know, you're coming in as a, a freshman next year. What do you weigh now? Oh, you know, this kid grew eight inches. Well, your, your 103 pounder or 106 pounder is not going to be 106 anymore. So you want to avoid all the surprises that you can simply by looking ahead and making plans then. And if you have some holes in your lineup, sometimes that's just part of high school coaching. It just is. The last thing you can do is pull some kid out of the hallway and say, you're varsity. And now that, that young man doesn't want to go on the wrestling mat and get pinned 27 times in the first period, right? All the cute cheerleaders are there and all the team is there. And every time he walks on the mat and you're like, what you're doing for the team is tremendous. He, that kid's not doing anything for the team. He's just getting pinned. I don't think these are like sacrificial lambs. We should not do that. So as a coach, you shouldn't like scramble last minute and then try to fill your spots because you're like, I'm embarrassed not to have a full team. Well, I'm going to throw that kid in there. Let's not worry about how he feels about it. No, I think that we need to, we need to say no. If I have a hole in my lineup, I should have planned on that a year or two ago. And if it just happens, then it happens. But I don't think that plugging kids into the lineup and having them wrestle up a weight class or up two weight classes or you have some first year kid thrown to the wolves. I don't think that's doing anybody any good. So, um, you know, when you talk about long-term plan, uh, sometimes you, you might have to forfeit a weight class on occasion. It's just part of it, but I definitely would not make that, that mistake. But um, ultimately, like I said, you want to have a team that sort of like runs like a business, operates like a business. You're the manager, right? You're not trying to do everything. You shouldn't be mopping the mats. There's things that are, there's systems that are in place, right? Um, we call it put the workers to work. I put the athletes to work. I put my coaches to work and they're putting the athletes to work and I manage everything and I will help too. Sure, I might mop a mat. Sure, I run some practices. Um, but for the most part, if you're a coach trying to do everything, um, that's a big mistake and you're just going to burn out. And, um, you know, we definitely want to avoid that. So anyway, there's some good tips on building a team. Thanks for following us. Make sure you subscribe get the thumbs up, leave a comment, share this with somebody that can use it. And if you start doing that, you'll start seeing a lot more of our stuff. And we're looking forward to sharing, you know, a lot more videos and things with you guys um, in the future. This is actually the first video that we've done here in our new, um, you know, I guess content creation room. And I um, guess you can call it a studio. But we've got a lot coming as far as... Um, our Perler Performance, which is our strength and conditioning gym, and our Perler Combat Academy, which is our striking and jujitsu. And, you know, we're going to branch out into these other areas as well as, you know, offering sites and insights for coaches, parents, mental game, weight loss, recovering, how to get recruited into the college wrestling, 
you know, all of these major topics. So I definitely want to stay tuned and keep learning from us. We love doing this and we love the fact that you share it and hopefully you're getting something out of it. So we appreciate it, but there's a few tips for you. We wish you great success.